So one thing I noticed about the drop tanks is they kind of have, usually it's one side it seems is a shorter fin than the other and it's usually the one leading inward. Uh, I just want to see if that's, because I've seen that on big ones, like my dad and I we built, um, painted up a um, 18th scale one a couple years ago. Yeah, so there it is. I can see it on that one. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to have to make that. That's that's a simple adjustment. That's not going to, you know, kill anything, but Let me just see here. Yeah. Oh, okay. So kind of the ones under the wing here. Let me flip this around better. So it looks like the ones under the wings. These ones have a longer fin, but the ones on the outside of the wing have the shorter fins. Well, I'm definitely going for this one. So I don't think it gives you options for that. And uh, oh, there's a pin seater. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna look. I look for the Matchbox one. I mean, it's mostly because I'm a Matchbox fan. I'm, I'm boring that way. This new tool has the Gallo ones and Italy. Yeah, but it's not a Matchbox. <laughs> so one thing I'm gonna do first is take this and I'm just gonna glide it across. And what this does is it it's gonna get rid of any little burrs that might be in there, and it's also gonna make it very very flat. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but keeping in mind that there are the pegs there. So, you can see like how nice and flat it is. Like even by going like this, there's, there's these little areas in there. You can see they're kind of, um, there you can see them a bit of a uh, brighter silver. And those are like all the little imperfections where it's sunk in more. So... It's all about getting around those. Hopefully by um, by doing this, what it'll mean for me is less work in the area of puttying and stuff like that and having to fill in <clears throat> seam lines along the side here. Because what it would be easier for me to do is to simply just take these pieces, um, glue them, which is what we're about to do here in a second, um, glue them, sandwich them together really tight so that the plastic will actually melt around the edge here. And that's much easier to sand down and quicker too because you don't have to wait a couple days um, for the putty to properly dry. So that is the goal here. And... Use quite a nice amount of this Tamiya glue. I just bought another one of these. This one's become very sticky, like stringy. So it still works. It hasn't ruined a model yet, but like I haven't got it on the model. Uh, but once it does, and this one's gone, I'm gonna use the new one. So again, these are going to be painted red, simply because I think that looks really good. Usually they're painted silver, but they were on occasion painted red. It seems to be kind of more of a, like an air show thing. Like there, let me see, come on. You can see the glue sandwiching there and kind of pushing up on the sides. So that's all I'm going to do is just keep pressing at it and applying pressure. And right there in the front corner, I can see that's not actually glue, that's the plastic. And that's what I really want. That's what I did on the side here. And uh, worked out really, really well for that. So 
That's what I want to do here again. And this is looking really sharp. So I just want to see how this fits in here. Oh gee, really, really well. Man! It's old, it's a little inaccurate, but it's just a nice model. I really like this thing. Really enjoying this. And then of course I went online, <clears throat> thought about getting another one. Found out that this is actually the first first edition of this kit, and that they're really rare, and now there's gonna be some people quite upset because they are collector items, but uh, it's a model kit that I bought because I plan to build it, not keep it on the shelf. I'll keep it on the shelf once it's done. So I'm going to go do the same thing with this other one here. And I cleaned up the uh, top here. Top stabilizer. It's quite thin. Very, very thin plastic. And uh, so yeah, this is all going to be painted red and then taped off so that only this part here is showing in silver. That this This part here needs to be silver. So, this is going to be, I think I'm going to glue this on. Actually, maybe I'll leave it off. I'll figure that out later. doesn't matter. Okay, I masked the canopy. Got that all nice and cut out. I'm quite happy with that. It's not too perfect, but it's not very accurate, so whatever. Um, also glued on the front. Um, what do they call this thing? It just left my brain. That always happens when I do these videos. And I end up looking like such an idiot. Well, more so an idiot <laughs> than usual. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you guys um, putting on the canopy and stuff like that. So what ends up happening quite often when I do canopies and stuff like this is I, um, like I, I, uh, I clean them, I mask them. I glue them down as if they're going to stay there permanently and then I pull off the maskings and there's little particles of dust on the inside and how that usually ends up happening is while I'm handling the model little particles of sand that might be here in the fuselage they work their way forward and they get stuck on there you know especially when you're airbrushing and you're holding it down and upside down and they just they get stuck and you end up having to rip it off and Peeling the tape and, and, and the original paint that you had under there, and it's just a big mess. Um, so, I'm going to try something a bit different here today. Uh, in case something like that happens again, and even if it doesn't, I'm going to glue it on much more sturdy. But I want this on here so I can paint it. It's the same color because it has to be airbrushed on there. And uh, I'm going to show you guys this in a second. So the first thing we want to do is... Uh, where is it? Yeah. My note to self was to get everything ahead of time. Um, Novus One. Now, you can find Novus One pretty easy on eBay and stores like that. Um, I think if you're in the States, you can even just buy it straight from the website and have it shipped to you. I don't know if they... I don't know if there's any issues with getting it, like, over overseas and stuff like that. I've never, I've never looked into that. So... This is just a cleaner, cleans, shines, protects, and I just like to use this on the clear parts, as I'll show you here in a second. And you just, yeah, you just apply this stuff on. And yeah, I can already see it being a lot shinier. Swap it over to the other side. And the other side I'm drying and, um, this is the dry end, I'm drying and buffing it. And the buffing, that's where you get that really nice shine. It's not quite registering here, but I can definitely see it. Yeah, that's what you want to hear. That nice little squeaky noise there. You don't want to apply too much pressure, but when you get that squeaking noise, that's usually the indication that you've cleaned it, you've got it all off, and it's nice and polished. So, next thing we want to do is I want a toothpick. You can also use a brush if you like. Um, let's see if I can find this stuff. Here it is. This is Micro Crystal Clear. You can also get this online. It's a bit expensive. Um, shipping prices for it are not the best. Um, I don't know again if this company ships overseas. I know that they do ship this within the United States. I don't know if they ship even uh, 
it across even the border here to Canada um, unless you're um, a model shop supplier stuff like that so all I want to do here is I just want a little drop right there okay and another little drop right there that's it we're done I might even take a little bit off no I'll do that in a minute here I'll show you guys what I'm talking about so we're gonna put it down Oh, this isn't fitting as nice as it did a second ago. Oh, yeah, 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 it is. There we go. Okay, that ends in... Not this side. <laughs> Come on. It's like it's kind of caught on a lip of something. I'm not sure what. <laughs> I'm not too... There we go. There we go. Now it's in place. <clears throat> but now you can see... We've got these globs of glue there. What are we going to do about those? Well, that's really, really simple as well. I'm just going to take a paintbrush, nice and clean. We're going to just dip it in water. Just dip it in clean water. There you go. Smooths it out. And you can do this. Oh, crap. Just bump the whole thing. It's not, it doesn't have enough. Like, if I leave it like this, it'll dry and it'll be nice and hard, but I'm trying to move the model around, that's what's bumping it off. Uh, anyways, what I was going to say is you can do this after, like, what I'm going to do when I'm done is I'm going to put glue all around the entire thing and set it down. And when it squishes out like that, you know, the glue squishes out, you just go over it with your brush and water and it's clean, it's done. So that's about it. I'm going to clean this here, this little area here in the front, the, the nose. Um, it's not quite smooth as I'd like it to be. And then I'm going to get prepping to prime it. I think I might go outside and prime it. So, yeah, it's, I'm liking this. It's coming together. Okay, I want to go over a couple things here. This is the bright mica red i believe it is it's like 80 ts85 comes in a rattle can lacquer um did not have a very good time with it there's a hair in there and that um it caught in it and um yeah it wasn't as nice and clean as i'd like and for what i bought this paint for originally it's going to work really well on that project but i'm looking at the at the um like real ones and stuff like that and it's just it's just not quite the color I wanted it's nice it's a beautiful color it's not quite registering as nice on my camera um, you can see it's just a little bit of debris there and it didn't apply well I should have been paying more attention to that I'm gonna use this here this is bright red that's what I used on my Mustang. Um, what color is this one here? What do you have it here? 49 bright red. So I'm gonna go and shoot this through an airbrush. I gotta decant some more of this. That won't take me that long. Um, but anyways, um, another thing I noticed is a bit of a issue with the kit here is I'm gonna sand all this down as much of it as I can um, and then yeah I'm gonna prime everything I thought I could get away with it here obviously I didn't it's just something on it and primer if I if I airbrush it in particular if I airbrush it I think it'll work a lot better the debris and stuff on here I think is caught because I did it outside and it was perhaps a bit too windy and this stuff got stuck on there so whatever I'm not too worried about that um, but yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rescribe the the line that goes through here. Uh, there's no like it, this isn't how it bends. There's supposed to be a bit of a a bend in it, and um, I kind of oh that's not in there. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to sand this down, rescribe both of those lines on there, and I'll be laughing. I'll be able to use that other color. It is quite a bright red that they used. I looked at it, and, and I could get away with using this one, but I like the brighter red a bit more. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, here's the decals. 
I'm gonna just keep them in this bag here. I uh, bleached them. Yeah, it's what is it? June, July sixth. So they've been out in the sun for quite a while, and this is about as good as they're gonna get. Now I'm looking at the Canadian rondelles, and they're not that bad. And I was just gonna use everything on the sheet here, but I bought these for another project or projects, I should say. These are from Canuck Models, their Canadian decal printer, and I just, I, like I said, I wasn't going to use them. I was just going to use all the Airfix decals, keep it classic Airfix, keep it to the kit. That was kind of my goal in it, but after I look at these ones, look at this. They're just way, way, way nicer, and I have a ton of them. Look at that. This was this was like seven dollars for all these. This is incredible, incredible price. Um, yeah, I'm gonna use these. They, I, I had a look at that that RC one, that big one fifth scale, and his are all really nicely printed, and they they've got all that beautiful ridge lines and everything. They just look great. I'm gonna go ahead and use these. So that's my goal right now. And it's gonna take me a little while, but I'm gonna go work on it right now. Hopefully I can start priming it tonight and get it done. Cause I just, I'm kinda kicking myself. Shouldn't have done this. Anyways. All right, I painted a lot of the Starfighter here. Um, I'm gonna start with the red. The I primed, I primed the entire model. We'll get to that in just a second here. Prime the entire model and it did not, it turned out pretty well, but I think there might have been a bit of uh, too much heat in the room and it pebbled on me. You can see that here. And when I put the, the red on, um, that kind of amplified it a lot. So this didn't turn out as nice as I would like. So I'm going to leave this for a week. Um, Basically, till I'm close to being done the model, I think. Maybe I'll even give it a shot here. Let's just see how... Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. Well... Actually... Yeah, I might actually be able to wet sand this. So my idea behind this is to um, wet sand this. I'll just take my uh, micro mesh and begin and slowly get up higher, wet sanding it to a nice polish, and then take Novus 1 over top of it, and that'll buff it out again, and it'll look just like this. The wing tanks fared quite a bit better, I must say. And I found a nice way how to clamp them down. So I got this clamp here, but all I did is I had a piece of cardstock doubled up and stuffed it into the, into the joint there. And I can't get it out. Oh no, there we go. So that was nicely stuffed in there, and they came out. These came out much nicer than the um, <clears throat> than obviously the tail there. Nice, beautiful red. This is um, I left the bottle in the other room, but this is that TS forty nine bright red that I decanted, and that's why I did that video. So if you haven't seen that one, uh, just go back a little bit. There's a, a newer video about decanting paint, and uh, that's where I did it there. But uh, here's the Starfighter, and the I just went over sanding it, very very lightly sanding it, um, to get out any little pebbles and rough textures and things like that. And it uh, went pretty well. It was very difficult in here in the right there in the in the wing root with the with the doors down. That took quite a bit of work to get them <laughs> sanded. It 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 really started to beat up in there and again I think that might have been my fault for not um, properly turning on the air conditioning and letting that room cool down and um, also I didn't have my um, uh, air pressure adjuster so that that also I believe contributed to it but it looks pretty good the other thing I went ahead and did is I painted the wings gray you can't really tell uh, <laughs> but I believe me I did they, they are they are the gray and uh, I just did this just a moment ago, and I just want to show you guys how great this looks here. So it just looks so beautiful. Can't wait to 
to see the rest of it with the maple leaf sitting there. That's just going to be so, so fantastic. Look at that. I can't, uh, I seriously can't wait. It's just going to be way too cool. Uh, what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to go wet sand this first. Um, and then I'm going to tape up the rest of the model. Now, the cone here, the nose cone, is supposed to be gray, but it's supposed to be darker than this. Now, part of the problem is, is because I can, I can see this. I know my camera's not registering it properly. This is lighter. I can definitely see that here. Um, and this has got kind of a bluish tint on it, and this is basically what it's supposed to be like. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape up the nose as far as it's supposed to go. I'm going to leave this primer as the as the gray color because it's basically it. So I'm going to leave the gray primer on there, tape the rest of this thing up, and I'm going to tape the wings up, obviously, and then I'm going to go and paint it uh, a gloss black in preparation for the uh, chrome I think I'm going to use. No, what, what am I using? I can't remember which one I decided. Aluminum. I'm going to use aluminum. Yeah, because aluminum was more than bright enough. Um, I did find out what this door is on the back. That is the parachute door. And it doesn't... All it does is it just drops like that much. Barely goes down just in the back. Just psh, shoots out. So I did it. I was able to find on that. Um, actually, I think the first color... I think what I'm going to do first is... I'm going to use this... Um, Duraluminum first, and that's going to require me painting just a couple areas on the back. So there's this area here, and these two. This one's going to be silver in the middle. So I'm going to paint all that first. Um, I'm going to paint this whole thing black, paint the duraluminum on there, and then uh, t gloss coat it with some future, tape it up, and then we're going to go ahead. I'm going to add on the aluminum. So that's basically my whole plan at this point in time. Here we go.